Well, good morning and welcome to House of Prayer. It is good to be gathered together as God's people who come together to connect our daily lives to our faith so that all might encounter Christ in each person. It is so good to be together on this Easter morning and to be able to celebrate, celebrate the risen Christ together in our time. We say a special word of welcome to our guests among us this morning, and we want you to know that guests are welcome to participate fully in all that we do, in all that we are here at House of Prayer. That especially includes our time of Holy Communion, and so please know that all are truly welcome at Christ's table here at House of Prayer. Special word of welcome also to those joining us on our live stream this morning. We're grateful for technology that allows us to be connected with people uh, in various places, those who wish they could be here in person but are unable to, those who are traveling, and those who just wandered along the internet superhighway and found us somehow miraculously. We are glad to see you, and we invite you also to be part of our communion celebration. And so take a piece of bread and a bit of juice or wine at home, and when the time for communion comes, we will celebrate together. Uh, you will find in the middle of your bulletin, or hopefully you already have found in the middle of your bulletin, an insert uh, of our Easter flowers with those that we are honoring and memorializing in this time. You'll also find our community news that'll tell you more about what's going on in the life of House of Prayer, and we invite you to engage those activities and any questions you have. Uh, there's contact there for the people to reach out to. Um, or you can always reach out to me, uh, Pastor Eric, who serves as the senior pastor here at House of Prayer. In our bulletin, you will find almost everything you need for the morning. There is one hymn that is not included in there that will be sung from the hymnal during our communion distribution. Um, otherwise, you should find everything you need printed in the bulletin uh, to easily follow along. Following worship at 10.30, uh, children are welcome to participate in our Easter egg hunt. And so that will be going on. We'll be collecting people in the narthex for that. Um, and it looks like the weather's going to hold so that we can go outside for that. And so a wonderful opportunity to celebrate and have some fun together. I invite us to center ourselves in this time of worship as we come together to celebrate the risen Christ. Please rise as you're able. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us, quench our thirst, nurture crops and creatures. Praise to you for life-giving waters of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of new creation. Wash away our sin that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. 
where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our psalm today is from Psalm 118 and we will read it responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. 
Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you. Unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you the first of importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able. Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming, bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? The Messiah isn't here, but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified on the third day, rise again. Then they remembered Jesus' words. When the women returned from the tomb, they reported all the things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and the apostles didn't believe the women. But Peter ran to the tomb, When he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated, and this morning, if there are any children who want to come forward for a moment, or maybe any childlike people who want to get a little closer moment with the pastor,
You okay back there, Wayne? All right. I just want to make sure you can hear everything. You're good? All right. Come have a seat. This is us, huh? The childlike among us. Anyone else want to? Come on up. Come on up. Any other childlike souls? Come on. Be brave. You can do it. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? Good. Tired? I was going to say, are we even awake yet? No? Mostly? Waiting for the Easter egg hunt? Is that what we're really... No? Not at all? Yes? Got a, we've got a no and a yes. Any other answers? Just hanging out, only here because mom was like, no, no, really, go up there. Be silly if pastor had to sit there and talk to himself all morning. Right? So I have a question for you all. What is hope? God? All right, we're done. Any other? What is hope? Have you, have you ever hoped for anything? What have you hoped for, Leo? I'm putting you on the spot. You can't answer. Any, how about, all right, here, we're going to ask these people out here. Anyone out in, in the rest of the crowd? Anyone ever hope for anything? Yes. All right. What kinds of things do you hope for? Health. Peace. Peace in God. Love amongst neighbors. Any sports fans do any hoping ever? I can't see Wayne, but I'm sure he must be smiling, right? I didn't plan this very well. He said he wants the Vikings to win the Super Bowl. See, now we've got... See, hope is sometimes this really big thing that just seems completely unbelievable, doesn't it? Right? It does. Sometimes we hope for stuff that seems a little more believable, right? Any of you hope for a car yet? Yeah? Okay, Leo has. Nobody else has. Have you ever hoped, have you ever hoped for some sort of like, gift that you really, really want, but you're like, I don't know, that's just too big? No? It's always within reason? Well, when I, when I was younger, I used to always hope, I would, I would have my hope list, things that I would hope for. And some of, these, some of these people have hoped for some very practical but very big things, right? We hope for health, and we, and we sometimes work toward that, and we can, we can take steps towards that, but sometimes it feels like it's out of our hands. And we hope for peace, and we can take steps for that, but sometimes it feels like it's out of our hands. And sometimes we hope for like the hugest Lego set that's available, the Lego Millennium Falcon that is as big as this altar up here. And I think to myself, I don't know where I would even put that if I received it, but I hope somebody buys it for me someday. Even though it costs thousands of dollars and it's totally frivolous and totally silly. Have you ever hoped for something like that? No? You all are way too practical. Yes? Okay. Mia, okay, what have you hoped for that's just so big and silly that you're like, I mean, yeah, it would be awesome, but... Max to actually be nice to you. <laughs> All right, Max. You're on the spot now. But we hope for things, don't we, that are big and, and audacious. And we, and we hope for them. But when we hope for them, how do we get the things we want? What do we have to do? You have to wait. Yep, sometimes you have to wait for things. What else do you have to do? You have to ask. You have to tell people what you're hoping for, don't you? And so sometimes when we hear the word hope, we think, oh, we, can, we could hope for all these things. We can have all these ideas in our head. But if we never ask anyone, if we never tell anyone what we're hoping for, it never happens, does it? And so now that Mia has asked for Max to be nice to her, it can happen, right? 
And, and since Wayne has been hoping for how many years now for the Vikings to win a Super Bowl? That's still not gonna happen. Um, Troll. What can I say? There's certain things you can predict in life. But in our faith, we also hope for things, don't we? We hope for Jesus' love, we hope for God's love, and we hope that God's love actually means something for us, but we hope that it means something for all the people around us too, don't we? And we hope that God, other people can experience God's love. And one of the best ways that we can help people experience God's love is to tell them about it. And so as we hear about these women who come run, they go to, to the tomb of Jesus, right? And they, they go there because they love Jesus and they want to take care of him even in his death. And then when they find that he's not there, what do they do? They go and tell other people because they've been thinking about what Jesus had told them. And so they want that story to continue and they hope that that story will continue because they have told the story as well. And so that's what we are called to do as well in our lives is when we hope for things, whether they're little things or big things, we have to tell other people about them and share our hope and our love in Jesus with others as well. Can we pray together this morning? I'll make it easy. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for the love of Jesus, love of Jesus. And, that we and that we can hope for the love of Jesus, love of Jesus to, be to be shared with all people. Help us, Help us to, be part to be part of sharing Jesus' love. Sharing Jesus love. In, the Jesus In the name of Jesus we pray. All right, everybody help me here. We're going to say amen, and we're going to close our hands on A, and then when we get to men, we're going to clap our hands. All right, can we do that? All right. Amen. Awesome. Thanks for coming up and helping this morning. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Peter ran to the tomb. He didn't waste any time. He didn't stop and collect $200. He didn't do any of that. I don't know if he was preparing for the women to be wrong and to be able to get there and say, oh, they just went to the wrong tomb. There he is, there's Jesus. He's behind that rock over there. I don't know if he was expecting to just get there and have somebody explain it all to him and have it all suddenly make sense. Or if he just needed to get there and see for himself. But whatever the reason was, there was urgency for Peter to get to the tomb. It's included in Luke's story. It's even included in John's story that the disciples run to the tomb. There is urgency in them getting there to find out what is going on. Dear friends, what creates urgency in our lives? What do we hope for so much that we will actually run to it? Over these last few weeks in this season of Lent here at House of Prayer, we have been working through the story of Peter's faith, his faith journey, and, and seeing the places where Peter's faith journey kind of echo our own faith journey. Peter's faith journey starts with him dropping his nets, leaving behind what he has known, the life of being a fisherman, Peter's story is one that continues as he declares Jesus to be the Messiah and hopes that this Messiah is truly going to make the difference that Scripture has promised that he would in life. 
Peter also, in this story, hopes that his many miscues along the way don't disqualify him from continuing to be part of the story or being continued to be wrapped in Jesus' love. With all of this swirling through his mind, all of the teaching for three years that Jesus has given him, this friendship that he has simply turning in his heart, Peter runs to the tomb hoping that the story of Jesus is not over. And when he gets there, he finds it just as the women had told him he would. Even if he was as disbelieving as the other disciples who wouldn't even go to the tomb, Jesus is not there. So what does this mean? It's a good Lutheran question that Peter asks before Lutherans even exist. We learn later that Peter goes back to where the disciples are, is locked up with them, and is kind of debating the question of what do we do next. We learn later in the story that Peter actually returns to fishing because he's decided, well, he'll at least go to the thing that he knows in order to kind of have some normalcy in his life for a little while. But for right now, Peter is confused, wondering, processing it all. And so after seeing the empty tomb, Peter returns home hoping that this story of Jesus, the Messiah, means something for his life. What do we as followers of Jesus hope for? At House of Prayer, we have declared a mission statement for what we hope as followers of Jesus. We say these words at the beginning of each worship service. At House of Prayer, we are a gathering of God's people, connecting our faith to our daily lives so that all would encounter Christ in each person. That is our hope as we gather as God's people. That is our hope as we come together as followers of Christ, that somehow this faith that we believe, that we have lived out, that we have learned about in our lifetimes, somehow matters in a big enough way that we can impact the world around us. That our daily lives are impacted so that when others see us, They see Christ, and when we see others, we see Christ. I think that sometimes is an even bigger hope and dream than the Vikings winning the Super Bowl. Because when we're honest, we know that we're going to fall short. We know that that is a dream where we are going to make missteps along the way. We can hope that our faith will make a difference in the world, but we know there are moments where we are going to stumble just like Peter has along the route. We hope that there are moments where it will be okay and that Christ's love will be big enough for all of those miscues and missteps. And we hope in that truth. As a church, we hope that our collaboration with organizations in the community like Veep and Every Meal and Simpson Shelter will feed a hungry world. And then we hear the words of Jesus that remind us the hungry will always be with us. But that doesn't stop us from feeding those who are around us, doing what we can to make a difference. We hope that our collaboration with Wood Lake around youth ministry will make a difference in the lives of youth in Richfield to allow them a welcome and affirming space so that they can wrestle with the questions of their faith and be developed as people who are grounded in the faith that we understand as being foundational to who we are as followers of Christ. We hope that coming to worship each week will help us to build relationships with those around us, to strengthen those relationships, so that in moments where we need to be supported by those around us, that we have people around us who will lift us up, who will allow us a shoulder to cry on, 
who will be the ones who celebrate with us when things are great, who will be the ones who will remind us of God's love, who will be the ones in worship singing the hymns alongside us, the hymns that reset our hearts on Christ's path in front of us as a reminder of those baptismal waters and our own forgiveness. We hope that proclaiming a message that all are truly welcome around Christ's table and in Christ's love is a message of welcome, inclusion, and celebration that is received by all people regardless of the color of their skin or their ethnic origin or their sexual identity or any other label that we as people have decided to put on others. And on this day that is marked not only as Easter but also as the day of transgender uh, visibility, we recognize as a reconciling in Christ congregation those people for whom too often the message of God's love and forgiveness has been put in front of them as a carrot and then told, but this doesn't include you. We as a church truly hope and believe in a God who loves us enough that God sees past all of those labels that we can put on one another and says to each and every one of us, you are included, you are welcome, you are loved and forgiven. Dr. Mitri Rahab is the former pastor of Christmas Lutheran Church in Bethlehem, Palestine. Yes, that Bethlehem, just down the street from where Jesus was born, is the church where Dr. Rahab was the pastor for many years. And he was quoted as saying this as a Palestinian Christian living in a time of turmoil. He said, I am hopeful but I am not optimistic. Because optimism envisions change but doesn't do anything to bring it about. But hope, hope believes against all odds that the smallest step will make a difference. So, Dr. Rahab said, every day, I make one step toward peace. This is a man who watched his church be torn apart in multiple wars, in multiple conflicts. A man who lived in some of the worst conditions that many of us could ever imagine. And he said, I still have hope that peace is possible because of the love of Jesus Christ. Peter ran to the tomb, hoping against all odds that there was more to the story. When he got to the tomb, he found the stone had been rolled away, that Jesus was no longer there. He understood that death had been defeated. Peter continued to hope that there is more to the story and that his journey in Christ was not over. Our presence here in this space celebrating Easter Sunday is testament to the fact that we too believe the message of Christ is not over, that God has more for each and every one of us and that the love of Jesus Christ prevails because the tomb is empty and Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia.
invite you to rise as you are able. And together with Christians of all time and of all place, we proclaim what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. As on this day of resurrection joy, we offer our prayers for ourselves, for our neighbors, and for the world. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world as we proclaim the good news that Christ is risen. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife, especially in Ukraine, Haiti, Palestine, and Israel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day, especially those living in addiction, those under the hand of abuse, those marginalized, those systemically oppressed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, House of Prayer Lutheran Church, our collaboration partners, Wood Lake, Oak Grove and Tapestry, and for your spirit in our midst as we seek to serve the Richfield community. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others, including Glenford, Judy, Karen, Jane, and Louie. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death, including Cal Jensen. Be with family and friends who grieve and renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ our resurrected and living Lord. Amen.
peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment and share God's peace with those around you. As we return to our seats, our worship continues in a time of offering our gifts before God. And so as the offering plates come by you this morning, you are invited to place either physically or just simply um, symbolically into those plates the things that are on your hearts which you offer to God. Whether those be financial gifts, whether those be gifts of your time, of your prayer, Whatever you are offering to God's service in the coming week, in the coming months, offer it in this time as an act of worship in praise and thanksgiving to God.
we join in prayer. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. So with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with the angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we stand to praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Gathered around this table, which Christ sets for all people, we remember the night in which he was betrayed, when after sharing a meal with those who were closest to him, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to those gathered, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And then again that night after the meal, he took the cup, having given thanks, he poured it out for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all the people for the forgiveness of sin. Take, drink, and remember me. And so as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim Christ in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, until he comes again. And so to prepare ourselves to receive this gift of God's grace and mercy, we pray together the prayer which Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is indeed Christ's table. The invitation to share in this meal comes from Christ himself. So whether you are a member of this church, another church, or of no church at all, you are welcome here in this time and in this place. Our ushers will guide you forward to first receive a wafer of bread. Hold on to that wafer of bread and you'll be presented with a chalice which has wine, a small cup which has grape juice, Dip the wafer into whichever is your preference. Consume those elements, trusting they are indeed Christ's body and blood given and shed for you. If you require a gluten-free communion experience, we do have a gluten-free uh, chalice and plate that we make available. Please just let the server know and we will make that available to you. If you would prefer to receive communion in your seat, we do also have individual communion packs that the ushers can make available for you to receive communion in your seat. Just let the ushers know and those will be made available. To those on our live stream, we invite you in this time to take a bit of bread, a bit of juice or wine. Consume those elements, trusting they are indeed Christ, body and blood, given and shed for you. 
to those in this space. Be seated. The ushers will guide you forward.
invite you to rise as you're able. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open your hearts. Receive these words of blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. We join in singing together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 